Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Amit and in today's video I am going to be talking about my 8 month update of the hair transplant that I got from Turkey. But also, I bought a drone and I'm going to fly this thing. Welcome back guys. As you can see, I am not in London at the moment. I have traveled back to Singapore to see my family and friends during the holiday period. So it's nice to just be back in the sun and getting a chance to just meet up with all my friends while I'm back here. But I didn't want to forget about the 8 month update, so I wanted to get on here and show you some cool new things that I've been getting myself. I know a drone generally isn't very useful for a hair transplant channel, but hey, I'm also a filmmaker and I really love to just try new things. So yeah, I just I thought I'd show you guys the cool thing that I got. Hopefully you guys like that little intro. Now for those who are here for the 8th month update, I'll give you a little preface of my journey so far. I got a hair transplant initially from Istanbul, Turkey for 6,100 grafts, extracted from my donut area and placed onto my hairline and my mid scalp. The second time I went back was about 8 months ago this year and I got my crown filled in with about 4,000 grafts extracted from my donut area. Initially, I wanted to get everything done at the first time I went, but the doctors advised me not to do that, to come back for a second session, which is what I did. I've seen so much of hair growth in the past eight months that I just want to keep sharing. I do post tips and advice about anything about a hair transplant, as well as my journey. If you guys are interested in that, definitely do consider liking or subscribing to this video, especially those who are considering to get a hair transplant or those who have already gotten one. These videos should prove helpful to you. If you find any value in it, definitely do consider liking and subscribing. Do make sure to stick around to the end of the video as well. I submerge my head in water and show you how my hair looks after that. But definitely do stick around to the end to check that out. All right, let us jump right into this update. So based off of the last couple of months, I've seen some small growth here and there on the back of my head. But for some reason now, I feel even more comfortable going out of my house with the amount of hair I have on my crown. The growth has been slow, but it is growing. Thankful enough I have these videos to really track my progress month to month to see how well it is growing. And compared to the 6th and the 7th month, I do see substantial growth on the 8th. It's made me feel even more comfortable to be able to be sitting outside, walking out, going and meeting friends without even having to cover up my head anymore. I used to always wear hats to go out or fiber sometimes if I just had to go meet a friend. But now I gained that confidence for myself to be okay with how I look at the present moment. I think that shows a lot about myself too because I would never be caught dead considering even going out without covering my bald spots on my head with a hat. I'm very thankful that I went for these two hair transplants and I've gained some sort of confidence back in myself. And I know how to carry myself now even more with people around me. And if anyone nowadays asks me if I have any issues with my hair, I don't have any issues with it because I went for a hair transplant and I feel as confident as ever. But I'm just saying if any anyone's out there considering getting a hair transplant, this is your sign. One great thing though, I have realized for certain is that my hairline and mid scalp are so much more thicker than they used to be. Usually around this month during my first hair transplant, I had an explosion of growth in my hairline and scalp and I could see a substantial amount that was covering the entire area. I went back the second time and I did a little bit of touch up there. I added about 600 grafts in the mid scalp as well as 200 grafts on the hairline. And over time, you can see how thick this area has become. It's insane to me because to be very honest, I've been so focused on my crown that I'm worried whether that area will grow out more, but I kept forgetting about the areas that I did add density to. That area looks so full. Very thankful that that has turned out the way it has. To be honest, I do expect a little more growth in that area, but again, now the focus is solely shifted to my crown. So let's see how that goes. But for now, my hairline and mid scalp look fantastic. Okay, so let's dive now into the 360 view of the hairline, the mid scalp, the crown, as well as the donut area. Welcome back to the section of staring awkwardly at my face. But well, let's focus our attention to the hairline and how good it looks against such bright lighting. Now, as we look to the sides of the donut area, you can see that in bright lighting, it does seem a little thinner than usual, but in fact, it's barely noticeable unless someone points it out. Moving over to the back, the donut area is pretty thick, so no issues there. The crown does still look a little thin, but as soon as there is more density, it should cover up very nicely. And lastly, the other side of my donut area. But again, in bright lighting, you can see maybe a little thinning, 
but you won't really notice it unless someone says something. And now let's take a look at the close-ups of the hairline and mid-scalp as well as the crown. As always, from the close-up angles, the hairline looks really good and strong. The 200 grass I added in my hairline definitely does show here, as the density seems to have increased. As for my mid-scalp, in this lighting you can see how much more I have now than I did before. My hair now has layers on top of where I can style it in different ways. For my crown, the growth has been increasing bit by bit, and you can really see how much coverage I've been getting over time. One thing I like to do is brush my hands through my new hair and try to shape it in a way that looks most natural and covers the area the most. There's still some ways to go, but it's getting there. Now's the part where I show you the monthly progress of the top-down view of my head from the first month of getting the hair transplant up until the eighth month. You can see here from month one to four, the area on the crown started off as needing a lot of coverage, but slowly it's been transitioning into less and less over time. Month five and six is where I personally started to see more hair growth, and it gave me a little more hope overall about the hair transplant. Month seven is where I thought the coverage was quite good and was starting to sprout much more. And now in month eight, you can clearly see that my transplanted hair covers up most of my previously balding area. Now let's talk about the aftercare updates. Compared to how it was last month, I did mention that I was traveling a lot so I didn't get a chance to keep up with my aftercare properly, but I have been back into the regiments following all my routines that I usually do. The first thing I take every morning is finasteride. I've been taking 0.5 milligrams of finasteride every morning. I've never had any side effects since, since the beginning of time of taking finasteride. I only started taking it about two years ago. And I used to start with a one milligram a day. That kind of fluctuated between one and 1.25. I usually took that amount during my shedding phase because I knew I wanted to keep as much hair as I could during that period of time. But once I got out of the shedding phase and I hit like my six month mark, I kind of switched over to a little lesser dosage because again, I saw so much substantial growth in my hair that I didn't feel that I needed to take so much finasteride to keep what basically wasn't there. I stuck to 0.5 milligrams and it's been working fine for me with no issues, no side effects whatsoever. Moving on, I also apply minoxidil every morning and night. I've been using this product called Growplex. I've talked about it countless times on my channel and it's effective enough for me to see substantial hair growth as well. I apply it on my donor area first then I spread it all over to my scalp. Now it depends on how you want to use it as well. If you want to apply it to your donor area that's totally fine. You can also apply it to your scalp that's also totally fine. But for me personally I do an all-rounder. I start up in the donor area and then I move on to the scalp afterwards. It also comes with a derma roller that you can also use actively on your scalp. Derma rolling is also very effective when you're trying to fight hair loss. It works hand in hand with minoxidil. It opens up the pores on your scalp for the minoxidil to be absorbed inside. So yeah, these products are very useful for me. Hopefully they are to you. Consider getting it and get a little discount code while they're at it. I also take very specific vitamins every morning. This consists of biotin, fish oil, magnesium, vitamin D, B12, multivitamins, and even collagen. I basically take all of these because they all help produce elements to help hair regrow. Lastly, I use a very specific type of hair loss shampoo, which is called the Revita High Density Shampoo, as well as the Revita High Density Conditioner. They are from a company called DS Laboratories. I've been using these guys for a while now, and I've seen so much of progress since then. And lastly, I take rosemary oil every other day. I think rosemary oil is really effective for hair growth. It has been proven by doctors that over time, you do see some sort of hair growth with rosemary oil. And that's what I'm sticking to as well. I've been taking it every alternate day now and I've seen very little progress from it because I only just started it. So you have to give time to these products and treatments to see whether you can see any difference in the future. So I'm going to give myself another couple of months, kind of analyze it from there. Again, I think it's all about being consistent with the products that you choose. A lot of people can buy these products and say they don't work, but if you're consistent with them and you stick to the regiment of three to six months at least, that's the only time you're really going to see results. I highly recommend giving that time to the products that you purchase, such as these. This works great for me, so I would highly recommend it as well. I have affiliate links in the description below. Check them out if you're interested. So the next thing I want to talk about is fibers. I talk about fibers in every monthly video because I find it very helpful for anybody who is wondering about how they can cover up certain bald spots on their head temporarily and i think it's a great product i think it's the best discovery that i have found myself and i can only recommend it to people who were in the same boat as me now even though i do have a noticeable area on the back of my head that could use some covering i've just felt personally a little more confident about myself to not worry about it anymore but there are times where there are other people out there who still need that sense of security and 
need to apply fibers onto their hair, I would still highly recommend it. The ones that I use is called Topic and I have a couple of the brands that I use, but Topic right now is the main one that I'm using. It's great, it's useful. If you're interested, definitely pick that up as well. If you are actually using fibers, let me know in the comments. You know, it'd be cool to just understand how often you use it and why you actually use it. So I'm curious, let me know. So the next thing I want to show you guys is basically how my hair looks when it's wet. I decided to film myself at the pool and just dunk my head in the water and show it to you guys just to show you how the hair actually looks even after it's wet. I used to not be able to put my head in the water back in the day because again, I was terrified of how it would look. It, it, it did not look great. Every time I'd wear fibers, I wasn't allowed to put my head in the water because all of the powder on my head would have been washed away. Especially being out in the rain, it was just not a thing. So I felt like now I'm at a point where I can actually dunk my head in the water and not be so worried about how it looks after that. But as you can see from here, it, it looks perfect in my opinion. It looks great. I don't see any issues. Of course, at the back, it does look a little thin, but hey, it's still a growing phase. I'm not too worried about that yet. I think it will eventually look good over time, but for now, wet hair is not a problem for me. I used to be very scared about showing my bald spot to people, but nowadays I'm so open about it to anyone. I tell people that I've gone for hair transplants. I show them my channel. I show them that, hey, if you need help, watch the videos. I know that they help me and I know they help my audience, so I only can refer more and more people to check those videos out. I do have a one-on-one -on -one hair transplant consultation service for anyone who wants to talk to me about how their own hair transplants are going or if somebody who needs help in deciding whether a hair transplant is a good idea for them or even about the clinic that I went to. Overall, at the end of the day, I am a guy who lost his hair, who has gained it back, and all I want to do is share that information and love to everybody else. Hopefully that does help anybody out there as well. All right, so finally, I think I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been following along this channel so far. I've been making a lot of progress on these videos. There's so much going on in my life, but I'm still so happy to update everybody about how did my journey is and hopefully it inspires somebody out there as well. As some of you know, I've also started using TikTok and I've already reached a thousand followers there, which is crazy in this quick amount of time. And a lot of my videos get tens of thousands of views, which is fantastic because again, at the end of the day, I'm all about helping people. If you haven't followed me on TikTok too, there's a link below. The support is genuinely appreciated. It only helps everything that I'm trying to do grow and make better videos for you guys. So just keep on supporting and I really, really appreciate it all. All right, I think that wraps it up. It is a beautiful day here in Singapore. I'm gonna go out and explore for a little bit. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, consider liking and subscribing to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Yes.